One thing that I think is crucial in developing any site is not to have the arrogance of thinking that we're the first people to ever build something here. And what I really hope is that we can bring some of the stories and the layers of history and integrate them very much into the buildings that we build here. We commission students to spend time in the Bristol Record Office, which has got fantastic collections on these sites, to follow the history of the post office, the history of the cattle market, and then it's the colour works, John Hare's dye works and the floor cloth manufacturers. These remarkable stories of floor cloths that end up in palaces around the world, produced right from just over there where student residences will be coming up in a few years' time. The place where we're standing now most recently has been a post office sorting office. This place is opened in 1938 but then expanded in the 60s and 70s. So you've got this period where this is a place where letters and parcels are coming in and going out. So a sort of centre of a massive network, a sort of global network, which I think does mesh with some of the kind of ambitions we have for this campus. The market was originally in the centre of town, but it moved out here in 1830 and stayed open until the 1960s. A lot of what we focused on was its relationship to the train station. Cattle brought in from not only the surrounding areas, but also Ireland and Canada. But there was not just cattle at the cattle market, there were sheep, pigs, calves and horses being sold as well. The sounds and noises that the cattle market made would really impacted everyday lives. Some of my favourite stories are sort of bulls breaking free and running down streets and things, and some people being actually frightened to sort of go out on the Mondays and Thursdays, which were the market days. John Hare & Co is one of the oldest companies operating out of Bristol, and they manufactured floor coverings on the other side of the river on Temple Island. They employed about 400 people, so they really were a centre pin for industry in this part of Bristol and the floor coverings that they produced were regarded throughout the world as some of the best. I think it's important for us all to understand that this hasn't been a derelict area for very long. We need to set the new campus in its historical context and that is one of enterprise and industry and innovation and growth that connects this particular area of Bristol with the whole world. They just started to do some oral history work, so one of the students recorded interviews with a few postal office workers but that would be a great next stage, I think, for this project, is to be able to talk to more individuals that were involved in working here. The market only closed in the 1960s, so I think there would be quite a few people and quite a few accounts that we could get of the more recent past of the cattle market. We think there probably is photographic evidence from the 1960s, 1950s times. So it'd be really, really interesting if anyone's got any photos. And with the John Hare story, the colourwork story, we really lose all traces from about 1945 onwards. And it would be great to know what happened to John Hare after that point. If there's any members of the Hare family, it would be great to hear from them. For me as a historian, the university is standing, if you like, in a long line of stewards of this particular space. And in some ways, I guess, as stewards, it befalls upon us to continue those kinds of traditions. The sort of stuff we do down here will be about communication networks, will be about responsible innovation, and will be about the connections between the local and global. It's the kind of place where I think you can build a civic global university. <laughs>